Well, it's been an absolutely brilliant week for the sport of boxing. It's been massive for the heavyweight division. Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury both announcing their next moves. But first things first, the first massive fight of 2019 is just about on the horizon. This Saturday night, James DeGale takes on Chris Eubank Jr. at the O2 Arena in London. And it's certainly an intriguing contest. James DeGale, a former two-time world champion. Is he slightly past it? Will Chris Eubank Jr.'s work rate and engine get to DeGale? Paul, it's a tasty one, who are you picking to win? I think Chris Eubank Jr. will do the business. The only reason why I say that is um, I just think there's a bit of a chi- been a chink in James DeGale's armour this last couple of weeks. I think I know he's been talking about retirement and sometimes I think when you're a sportsman like that and you, you can beat yourself, can't you, you know, in your head when you start thinking about retirement. Is he, is he already worrying about this fight? Um, it's probably something I'd have spoke about after the fight, to be honest. I just hope it doesn't, you know... Um, Put him off in his preparation. I'm not sure. It, perhaps, perhaps it won't. But that's just the, the inkling I'm getting. And I think I think DeGale might just just come up short in, in this fight. But it's going to be a close one. It's going to be a cracker as well. You know these these British fights. You know you've only got to look back at the, the fights we've had in the past with Froch and, and Groves and Groves and, and DeGale as well. They, they, these are the fights that people want to see, aren't they? And I'm really excited for this one. But I just fancy you, Bat Junior, just to uh, to edge it on points. Yeah, Al Heyman's come over to the UK looking to make a huge statement promoting shows over here. Now, he's put together a decent little undercard. First things first, the heavyweight Joe Joyce will be taking his first big step up against former world champion Bermain Stavern. Are you looking forward to this? Will Joe prove that he is at that world level? Um, I'm not so sure whether he will. I hope he does. I certainly hope he does. It's, it's a big step up, isn't it? We said it before, those guys, and we spoke about earlier, boxing's all about levels. And, you know, if Joe Joyce wants to go to the top, these are the sort of fights he's got to get under his belt to progress to, the, to that next level. So uh, he's got the talent and he's got the skills, and uh, he'll be looking forward to, uh, to, to, to getting that under his belt on, on Saturday. And I hope so, because he's, he's a good kid and, uh, you know, he used to have the talent. We also have the return of Lightning Lee Selby. He was shocked last time out when he lost his world title to Josh Warrington, but he's stepped up two weight divisions now. Hopefully he won't be dragging his body down to that featherweight limit. It was always a tough cut for him. I think he's going to be rejuvenated. He's back against Omar Douglas. Are you looking forward to a big statement from Lee Selby to prove that maybe he can be a world champion once again? So I think he can. Lee, Lee Selby's a special fighter, and I think... Just what you said there about that defeat against Josh Warrington, that just goes to show how good a fighter Josh Warrington is because everybody raved about Lee Selby and, you know, quite quite rightly so as well. He's a super fighter, super fast and, you know, to step up the, the two weight divisions, some people might raise an eyebrow to that, but he always seems to struggle at the, at the lower weight anyway. So, uh, so yeah, I think um, the, he, he's still got a lot to offer the sport and I'm excited to see him back in action on the, on the weekend. Anthony Joshua's next fight has finally been announced. Jarrell Big Baby Miller out on New York on June the 1st. Some people are excited. It's Anthony's American debut. Some are slightly disappointed. It's not the big fight they wanted. What are your feelings, Paul? Was this the right move? Um, I would have liked to have seen him fight Tyson Fury or... You know, there's British fights over here. Dillian White was being being talked about as well. But sometimes you go with the money, don't you, and the big names. And, you know, Big Baby Miller is, Gerald Murray is a, is a, is a big name in America now, isn't he? And obviously it's his, his American debut. So you know, those sort of fights don't get any bigger than that, those big stages, do they? And uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll grace it in New York, Anthony Joshua. And obviously he's got to think about himself. You know, he wants to propel himself into the, the Americans' eye line, don't you? And a lot of Americans think, you know, Fighting over here is not as good as, as fighting over there, and it, it's going to put him on that stage in the USA, isn't it? and there's, there's millions of people are going to see that over there. And sometimes we think that everything in Britain, everybody watches, but but people don't do it at that stage in America. It's set there for him. So I believe he can he, he can he can finish Gerald Miller quite easily. I think he's he's, he's got all the all the tools in his armory to uh, to finish him. Obviously, he's made a lot of noise and, and got himself a fight, and he's going to earn himself a lot of money. But there'll still be some massive fights after this for Anthony Joshua. But he'll just be focusing on that. One, and I'm sure it'll come through that unscathed. Yeah, big news for Tyson Fury as well. I think we're all expecting the rematch with Deontay Wilder to be announced, but a spanner has definitely been thrown in the works. Fury has announced that he's signed a co promotional deal with Top Rank, meaning his fights in America are going to be broadcast on ESPN. So, in the past, where Joshua and Wilder were those A sides, Fury's right up with them now. Do you think it's going to be more difficult to make this big fight, or do you think Deontay might be coming over to ESPN to take on Fury? And if so, do you think that'll give Fury more chance if it goes to the judges' cards? 
Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I think the, the big fights are going to happen for Tyson Fury. I mean, he's a box office fighter. He's a, he's a world-known fighter. Is he? And people want to see him fight. You know, Deontay Wilder will be a super fighter again. Obviously, we all want to see him against Anthony Joshua's all the mouthwatering fights. And I, I just hope they do get made because, as we've said before, I mean, you, the, the politics in boxing sometimes can, can be like a stumbling block and the roadblock that stop the, these fighters in together, don't they? So I hope it doesn't. I hope, you know, promoters can get together, get around the table and get the fights on because these are fights that we all want to see, aren't they? And, you know, Tyson Fury, as we've said before, he's a box office fighter. He's exciting to watch, and it's never a dull moment with him. And, and he's got some talent as well, hasn't he? So I'm hoping 2019 will be a big year for him and he can get a couple of fights under his belt. Last question of the day for you, Paul. A man who had a terrible 2018 was Billy Joe Saunders. He had two fights with Martin Murray called off due to faults of his own. He failed a drug test and he also posted an extremely controversial video online onto his Twitter profile. He's going to be back now taking on Shafat Esufi for the super middleweight world title, moving up a division. Do you think this is good for Billy Joe or do you think he's wasted a huge chunk of his career and he's not got the middleweight fights against the likes of Canelo and Golovkin that his career and potentially legacy may be deserved? I think Billy Joe Saunders has been his own worst enemy over the last few years. He, he's a super fighter, super talented fighter. You know, we've, we've seen him come up with some great wins. And I think the whole surrounding of the, the Martin, Martin Murray's been a, been a top fighter, hasn't he? And I think the way that, that he treated Martin Murray and the way he disrespected him on social media, the way he talks about his family and things like that, it was an absolute disgrace, really. I think he's brought a lot of disgrace on himself over the last sort of 18 months. That That's affected him mentally and it's affected the way people think about him and it's up to him now what he does with his career but I think he was right at the top of his game and can he bounce back from that I'm not sure whether I want him to really because he's not my, my favourite boxer the way, way he treated one but, uh, but we shall see he's moved up hasn't he like you say and uh, no, he, he, there's no doubt in his talent he's a very talented fighter very tough fighter as well and uh, we'll see how he goes on Thank you, Paul. I can't wait for this weekend. De Gale and Eubank, I think you should all tune in. And I look forward to talking to you all about it next week. Next up, we're talking yeah, football, you, darts and a hint of wrestling. The Premier League of darts is officially underway now. We've had some brilliant weeks of action. Let's kick it all off in Glasgow. Peter Snakebite Wright and Michael Smith finish in a 6-6 draw. First things first, Matt, do you think this was a brilliant opportunity taken by Peter Wright or did Michael Smith drop points here? Oh, I definitely think Michael Smith dropped points in this one, to with you, James. Uh, two well-established Premier League players, both battling it out. I don't think either of them were really at their best for most of the game. Uh, Michael Smith, I think, missed a lot of opportunities to finish and probably didn't deserve the win because of that. So I think a draw was probably a fair result in the end. Coming off that draw against Peter Hart a couple of weeks back, Rob Cross, the former world champion, meant business in Glasgow, and he defeated James Wade 7-4. Matt, are you impressed with the world champion? Do you think he can add to his trophy cabinet this year in the Premier League? Yeah, I thought we saw Rob Cross at the top of his game, really, on Thursday night. Um, it's a great win for him. I think he's a real contender for the, for the title this season. We spoke a bit at the beginning of the season about Rob Cross and whether or not he could battle with Van Gerwen, who's won it three times in a row. Um, do you think Rob Cross is a contender, James? Uh, I absolutely think he is. I mean, all these players in the Premier League are at their elite, but if I was to pick players out, I think you are looking at the likes of Cross, especially with Anderson not taking part this year. MVG is ahead of everybody. It's going to be interesting to see who can take him up, who can give him a challenge, and who's going to be in those playoff places. Anyway, moving on to Raymond Van Barnevel versus Gerwin Price. The Welshman started strong, but it was Barney who clawed the points back after a disappointing week against James Wade where he lost. James, I know you're a proud Welsh man, but you're not patriotic when it comes to the former rugby player, Gerwin Price. Tell me why. It's his demeanour, and I know that the, 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 the sport of darts is theatre. It's a live show. It's the Coliseum. It's bullfighting. It's, it's drama, but he just goes too far for me. He knows how good he is. He knows that he can compete with the likes of Van Barneveld, but he knew it too well, and he threw away points there, I thought. I thought the atmosphere in Glasgow was amazing. I thought, I thought that Van Barneveld started weak. Gerwin Price started uh, very strong, but I thought by the end of it, we didn't know who was going to come out on top, and I think... Draw is probably a fair result. So after two games, the contenders are split across the board. Chris Doby lost his opener, whereas Glenn Durant was also beaten. And um, do you think, Matt, this is showing that the contenders aren't quite up to scratch? Or do you think things will work out for them? I think in Durant's case, it was a matter of experience. Um, I think he was the, the lesser of the two on the night. And uh, it showed, really... It, um, 
he wasn't at his best and I think the difference in class and experience between an pr- established Premier League player and someone making his first debut is showed. Yeah. Uh, Wardy, one last one from this week's game. Michael van Gerwen defeated Mensa Suljevic 7-3 and the Dutch darting animals looking unstoppable at this point, isn't it? It's routine. It's routine. It's bread and butter at this stage. He is an absolute joy to watch. Like, it's hard with um, darts for the drama to be made actually inside the board. It's like I said with players like Gerwin Price. It's all it's all the drama of outside the board, the way they carry themselves, the way they the way they walk back, the way they talk to their opponent. But with with MVG, it's all in the darts. It's all in the performance. He's got the passion in there. He's got the talent, and I think it's going to take something special to beat him this year. Yeah. Moving on this week, this Thursday night in Dublin, the fixtures are as follows: Gerwin Price versus James Wade. The contender in Irish man, Steve Lennon versus Peter Wright, Michael Van Gerwen versus Rob Cross, Michael Smith versus Daryl Gurney, and Mensa Sujevic versus Raymond Van Barneveld. Matt, what takes your fancy out of those games? Oh, it's got to be Van Gerwen and Rob Cross, and it? It's the big game of the night. It's what I think will be the final when it comes down to it, if the draw goes their way, that is. Um, I think it's going to be a huge night and a great game of darts. Yeah, quickly on the wrestling at the Elimination Chamber, the whole world was stunned as the veteran Kofi Kingston looked possible to finally pick up that WWE title. In the Chamber match, we had the likes of Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe. They each put across valiant efforts, and I think most people wanted the Jamaican man Kofi Kingston to come away with the win. He's been a veteran, he's been around the sport for such a long time. Was a big part of my childhood as a matter of fact I was a huge fan of him and a 10 year old me really wanted him to win that match but unfortunately it wasn't to be and the next big event will be taking place at Wrestlemania we'll be back on the sports zone with the football I'm Wes Brown and I listen to Salford City Radio so let's talk football now Man City beat Newport 4-1 Wardy to get through to the next round of the FA Cup you know, expected really. Yeah, very much expected. You've got to give it to Newport. They've tra- they travelled a long way in this competition. They fought hard and they fought bravely and they fought with honour. And I think with a team like City coming to town, it's a great chance to get a bit of revenue, get a bit of publicity. Your, de- your game is getting televised on the BBC. Uh, I think Newport can be proud of themselves. This is one of the greatest teams in the country, if not... Uh, the world uh, so they didn't disgrace themselves they got very far and they should be proud yeah Phil Foden scored twice Matt for City huge potential for him he could go all the way to the top yeah that's the big takeaway from the game I think really is Phil Foden's performance he showed a bit of class he showed his ability and he got a full game to show what he can really do for City I think the key now is for Guardiola to give him as much time as possible so a similar thing to what happened with Jaden Sancho doesn't happen and they don't lose him to another big club hey James City for the quadruple what do you think uh, absolutely not, Rob. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> Get off the fence, James. <laughs> yeah, really. Why don't you make a decision? <laughs> yeah, well, things are, you've got. To, you've got to think they're in all the competitions. It could be. A, it could be an option. No, they absolutely are. And I say week in, week out that I want Manchester City to win that Premier League, mostly because I want Liverpool to not win the Premier League. But the idea of them winning the quadruple, I just want to get off the planet now and stop watching sport forever. I couldn't cope with that personally. Yeah, let's talk about Man United. They beat Chelsea 2-0 yesterday. Solskjaer's winning run continues, Wally. Indeed it does. But I think yesterday, even though as well as United played, it wasn't about United. I think what we saw most is the crack in Chelsea. I thought we saw the absolute epitome of Sarri ball the control of the possession and almost control of the game but lacking any imagination or any creativity in the final third they never looked like trouble in Manchester United's goal and United deserved the win I think Sarri's really in trouble there Yeah, Paul Pogba outstanding again and Andres Herrera, Matt you know, both of them outstanding on the day Yeah, unbelievable performance especially from Paul Pogba and I think we're starting to see slowly now the Paul Pogba that we never saw under Jose Mourinho the Paul Pogba that United paid £90 million for and the one that we really expected to see when you paid 90 million and you get a goal and an assist at Stamford Bridge where United have a terrible record. They've got, I think, seven losses and two draws in their last nine trips to Stamford Bridge. So it's a really tough game and we went against history winning that and Pogba was a huge catalyst in doing that. So, Yeah, the FA Cup draw was made, uh, James. City are away to Swansea and United are away to Wolves. 
Both winnable for both our sides. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely tougher games in the competition. If you want to progress, they're the sort of teams you want to play. And if you're looking to get out the youngsters, it's also a terrific opportunity for them to get out on the big stage. So if I was a Manchester United fan, which I am, or a Manchester City fan, then I'd be happy with that fixture. Yeah, loads of football going on uh, this week, Warder. Uh, Liverpool face Bayern Munich tonight. Uh, it could be a cracker, that. It's a big game. We were talking about this before, that none of us want to predict it, because I could easily see it being 3-0 Liverpool as easily as I could see it being 3-0 Bayern. Both teams are lacking important players. Both teams have had quite strange seasons. Liverpool uh, started so well, everybody backed them to win the league. Recently, they've kind of slipped in form, but they've kept the results, whereas Bayern, they've been all over the place this year. Yeah, still one of Europe's big giants and I think we've got a massive game tonight it could go anyway yeah Lewandowski for, for Bayern Munich Matt you know big player for them Liverpool going to have to watch out for him yeah absolutely and without Van Dijk who really holds that Liverpool defence and really the entire Liverpool team together it's going to be a struggle but Bayern have got their defensive frailties as well I think they've conceded eight goals in the last four games and if there's one thing Liverpool know how to do it's take advantage of defensive frailties with the talent and pace that they've got up front so it's going to be an interesting night and I wouldn't like to call it Rob Got a quick fire uh, predictions you James first win up tonight uh, I think Bayern Munich win tonight What? Bayern Munich Bayern Munich Matt I'll go Liverpool you're going to go Liverpool oh, ok Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to go I'm going to go um, Liverpool I think I'll Liverpool at home in the middle no one bets on a draw, we'll say a draw, shall yeah. we? We'll never bet on a draw. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Man City are away, uh, sorry, are yet away to Schalke uh, tomorrow. Um, big game for City, Wardy. Um I think they've had bigger, I think they've had bigger. We've talked about City's maybe uh, inexperience in the Champions League. They've got far a couple of times, semi-finals a couple of times, but I think this is the season where they really have to do it. They've got one of the best squads going, and I think against teams like Schalke, a squad like Manchester City will expect to walk all over them. No stones, no Jesus, uh, Matt. You know, they've got a good squad, City, but they are going to be missed. They are, but City have got such a strong squad depth and so many important players in their team that I don't think two players missing will make so much of a difference. I think it'll be pretty much a routine win, even though it's a difficult place to go. Uh, I still fancy City to win that 2-3-0 really Yeah obviously looking forward uh, James and then the EFL final against Chelsea on Sunday you never know will he pick the first trophy up I think there's a very good chance they will. Chelsea have absolutely been slacking at the moment. We've seen they lost 2-0 to Manchester United. They had that hammering off Manchester City. So for any opposing players that take on Chelsea, I think they have a really good chance. Yeah, United face Liverpool in the Premier League. Uh, Warder, big game for both sides, that. Oh, it's a huge game. It's a six-pointer. Thankfully, I, I I won't be watching it. I'm too nervous. I'm, uh, I'm in Wales on Sunday, so I, I won't be able to watch it, which is probably a good thing. I don't think my little art can take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> will will uh, will United do City a favour, James? Uh, oh, that, that's a horrible that's way. A horrible it, but, uh, <laughs> but hopefully, yeah. I mean, th look. It's who's the worst of two evils, and yep. I think we can all agree yep. unanimously that Liverpool are the worst of the two evils. But <laughs> I think Manchester United will beat them, and I think they'll look good doing it. I think after they lost to Paris Saint-Germain, I think they came back brilliantly against Chelsea, and I think that shows exactly what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is. He's a man who's inspired the side. If we were under Mourinho, I think we'd be losing games back-to-back, -back, not losing then winning. This is what we want to see, and I think Manchester United will defeat Liverpool and hopefully as weird as it is to say that leads to Manchester City winning the Premier League yeah let's talk about our other local side Salford City FC Matt uh, we defeated 3-1 uh, at home to Dover David Becker made his first appearance down there uh, but the Salford City FC fans probably disappointed with that result yeah it was great for Beckham to be there for the fans and a morale boost and a bit of a media day really but a disappointing result in the end and Salford have struggled now for I think the last five games without a win They've slipped from second down to fifth. And we were talking the other week about Solio Moores, who were only one point behind Salford in third place and now seven points in front of Salford and in first place. So that shows you the difference in this poor run of form that they've, ha that they've had. And they've got a big game coming up at the weekend. It's a crucial win. Um, and they just need to refine that form and pick, get back to winning ways like they were earlier in the season. Yeah, Graham Alexander-Warder wants a reaction from his players after that performance. 
Hopefully he'll get one. Of course, of course he does. It has been a very strange few weeks for the Salford team. It's been a very strange season. Like It's been very up and down. There's never been any uh, middle ground. They've either been on top of the world or absolute at rock bottom. They need to pick themselves up. It's all about character now. They know they've got the talent. They know they've got the squad. It's all about the mental strength. If you can go out there, forget the losses, forget the, the stick that you've received, you can go out there and you can do anything. And I still think they can challenge for that top league spot. Yeah, they've got some good players, James, Adam, uh, Rooney. They've dropped out of fifth. Are they running out of steam? That's a big question. Yeah, I suppose you could argue that Salford started the season so well and they are slightly drifting a bit now. I think as a community, we all want Salford to rally around themselves and get back to winning ways. They're definitely capable. We've seen them play so brilliantly, so we just need to pick off from where we left off. I hope with the likes of David Beckham turning up at the ground, it'll be a bit of a morale boost and hopefully Salford City can be what they were early in the season. Yeah, final minute of the show. Uh, let's talk about Earlham FC. They drew nil-nil with Paddy in this week. Week, Matt, um, thirteen for the league, battling performance there. A result, a point, it's good for them. Yeah, I think they'll be happy with a point. To be honest with you, Rob, um, it's been a good season so far for them. Uh, I think they'll still be looking forward to the FA Cup Vars tie, and um, we wish them all the best at Salford City Radio. Yeah, uh, this week, Kurt uh, Warder, they face Whitechurch, Alport. Uh, tonight at home and then they're playing Runcorn Town at weekend two games there back to back wins would make a big difference for them of course it would every game is a must win in every league we we, we don't realise how competitive uh, each league in every division is every game is a must win and uh, they will see after a kind of grinding nil-nil where they couldn't really make anything happen they'll be looking for uh, a win tonight and a win the next week and a win after that I'm sure they'll do fine yeah we've got 20 seconds James obviously a lot of football goes on in our area it's great isn't it <laughs> Absolutely is, and just before we go off air, I just want to say a quick word about Emiliano Sala and Gordon Banks, who've both tragically lost their lives. They've done a lot for the world of football.